This screencast is looking at the nervous and chemical control of ventilation during exercise and it's standard 2.1.5 for the ventilatory system. What we will be looking at um, is the way in which our lungs work to either increase or decrease ventilation and we need to look at them with respect to blood acidity or low pH, just remembering that a decrease in pH is an increase in acidity. So you could talk about increase in acidity or a decrease in pH. Due to increased carbon dioxide content of the blood. Now when we do physical activity, the higher the intensity, so the greater the intensity of exercise, the greater the amount of energy that's required and the greater the reliance on the anaerobic glycolysis energy system and a byproduct of this system is hydrogen ions and lactate which together form lactic acid. As our hydrogen ions increase, we have an increase in acidity or a decrease in pH. So here, the greater the level of activity with respect to intensity, the lower the pH. So as the pH lowers, increase in amount of carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of the aerobic energy system. So again, the greater the intensity, the greater the energy requirement, the greater the contribution from the aerobic energy system, and the greater the production of carbon dioxide. So because of that, we will increase rate and depth of ventilation so that we can deliver more oxygen to the working muscles, meaning that the aerobic energy system will work better, more efficiently, which will then decrease the contribution from the anaerobic glycolysis system. We will also look at neural control. Now, here it says that we don't need to worry about hydrogen ions. However, as we've just looked at previously, because hydrogen ions increase, acidity increases or pH decreases, therefore we're looking at blood acidity levels. So they are directly related. So this statement is looking at breathing rate being controlled by chemoreceptors. So chemoreceptors meaning that we're looking at the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide. If oxygen saturation falls, then we are going to increase respiration. If carbon dioxide increases, then again we will look to increase respiration. Control of ventilation. Um, this is from a, another website. And here we're looking at it particularly to do with pressure of carbon dioxide. But again, it said earlier that we don't really need to worry about partial pressure of oxygen. Here it's saying that a partial pressure of carbon dioxide is probably the most important thing. And the general rule here would be that as our pressure of carbon dioxide increases, then we're going to increase respiration rate so that we can get as much oxygen into our system as possible. So why? Well, metabolic demand may go up.
and that's again really what we're looking at here when we're looking at during exercise. So here exercise means that we're working at a greater intensity, we need to therefore produce more energy. The body would like to use the aerobic energy system as much as possible so we try and increase oxygen intake and delivery to working muscles. Increase oxygen intake means that we're going to increase our respiration rate. So again, this is just very quickly looking at the different senses. Chemoreceptors, so we're looking at the oxygen and carbon dioxide lung receptors that we'll look at in a minute the receptors on the chest wall and we don't need to worry about the other receptors so again chemoreceptors we looked at it very quickly before pressure of oxygen pressure of carbon dioxide if pressure of oxygen increases, then respiration can decrease. If, if pressure of carbon dioxide increases, then respiration rate will increase. Our pH, so if we have a pH increase, which means an increase in acidity, which is normally due to an increase in hydrogen ions, then respiration rate will increase so that we can deliver more oxygen and we don't need to worry there about blood, blood flow nor temperature. There are some hints and tips. Um, you can stop this or pause it and have a look at those if you'd like. Receptors in the lung. Um, two, oh sorry, three types. We have rapidly adapting receptors slowly adapting receptors. Now our slowly adapting receptors are generally used within the first year or so of life so it's not something that we generally would worry about here. Um, where it's talking about inflation is that if our lungs are fully inflated then it, chances are we're going to decrease respiration rate. If they were deflated then it means that we need to increase respiration rate. Now our rapidly adapting stretch receptors, what we're looking at here is mechanical deformation, chemical irritants, noxious gases or inflammatory stimuli and if they're present then we will increase respiration rate. Our C fibers receptors over here is basically looking at um, histamines, which may decrease the ability to breathe. So you think that, say, with um, hay fever, we would take an antihistamine, helping us to breathe more freely. Looking here at receptors in the chest wall. Sorry, put this in a better spot. Maybe not. Receptors in the chest wall, they are joint receptors. A joint receptor measures the velocity of movement of bones or joints. So this is really looking at the speed at which our ribs move. We have Golgi tendon organs. So these are looking at the strength or force of contraction. And lastly, we look at muscle spindles. So this is looking at the length of muscles. So if you put these together with 
joints or bones moving at great speed, they're exerting a large force and they're lengthening so the muscles are put on stretch, it means that they're working harder. The harder those muscles are required to work, the deeper our breathing and the faster our breathing will be. So the faster our breathing will be, that means we're increasing the respiration rate. The deeper we're breathing is looking at increasing our tidal volume, working towards getting to vital capacity.